Well, hello, and thanks for watching again. This is the post Collab Talk Tweed Jam summary interviews. We go through and we talk about the topic for this month of August 2021 was activating the flow of work. And Sherry, thanks a lot for joining. Why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, thank you, Christian, for having me. I'm Sherry Oswald. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer, Microsoft Office Specialist Master, and my passion is productivity. So this topic was close to my heart today. So I'm um, the Chief Experience Officer for Power Up Learning, and if you need um, anything learning, that's me. I love it. So. Well, what's interesting about a topic like this is because it covers a number of different areas. When So Jared Spataro at Microsoft went and did a, an article uh, talking about kind of the, fu the future of uh, of you know intelligent applications and in the flow of work and what does that mean the flow of work and I've interviewed a couple of people gotten slightly different perspectives on that uh, and, and so I was interested to see how people respond what they talk about and like so well you know what? I guess I'll just jump right into the questions and we'll talk about it I was going to start to go through and like how do you define it but that's kind of one of the questions so <laughs> the first question that we asked uh, during the tweet jam so what does it mean to collaborate in the flow of work so what does that mean to you well for me again I go back to that productivity thing and I years ago I did that getting things done and compartmentalizing what you're working on and anytime you context switch you lose seconds if not minutes of productivity as you decide you know you know you have mail you go look at the mail you come back and now you've lost where you were and whatever you're working on so that just those little micro bits add up to a lot and so we're being able to collaborate in the flow of the work is being able to work where you are like if i'm in teams i want to work from teams if i'm already in sharepoint i'm going to work in sharepoint if i'm in microsoft word i should be able to save or share that file from where i am instead of having to switch to another place so it the, exactly. I think that the context sw switching, the amount of time that you lose there, uh, and and the contextual uh, collaboration. So the, the the pieces. Here's an example. i um, just had a, kind of an operations and internal uh, call a couple hours ago, and we were talking about uh, data around a customer, and that it was like, well, what's what's their profile? And so somebody was in CRM and kind of looking at the latest updates for the CRM. Well, that could be actually shared in we were in teams we were in a team's meeting we had a a conversation threaded discussion going there were people that were not on the on the call in in the meeting but were responding to questions that our group was asking via the chat this is like a running a weekly operations uh, a teams meeting and to be able to pull up those conversations and share it you know, right there in that threaded discussion. So then there's a history of that as well that's captured, as well as, you know, we can actually see the data and and collaborate around it. That's the way that I look at it. It's yeah. obviously, we're not entirely there uh, within our organization. I know the technology, there's a lot of build that needs to happen to kind of achieve that, that, that view. Uh, but that's the first thing that I think of too, not interrupting or, uh, or or interruption with context is the way that I <laughs> that I put it. I know, I know there's nothing more frustrating when you're in a meeting. They're like, "Well, wait, wait a minute, I have that over here. Hang on." And you're everybody's sitting there with bated breath, waiting for that person to bring up the file that they're because it's somewhere else and they don't know where it is. And again, lost productivity. Um, well, you know, we you know had those kind five of love languages. Oh, sorry. You know, the five, you know, the five love languages, yes. of, you know, gifts, whatever. Mine is yeah. don't waste my time. It's none of those five. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mine is rub my back. Yeah. <laughs> real, real simple there. No, I was just thinking in, in this meeting, one thing that we have with our culture, too, is we were waiting for somebody to go and was looking something up, trying to find through email, find this relevant data is that we then jump to questions. So then the running joke through the rest of the meeting was we kind of went back and forth because we had start and stops with any one topic. And so we ended up jumping around in, in the list of things to do, but uh, you know, not very efficient. It worked for a 30 minute weekly call, which is designed specifically for us to field any an unanswered question cross organization. But it could be in a much more efficient way. Definitely. Um, question two, in what ways are you or your organization trying to improve the employee experience and streamline the flow of work? 
well, we're pretty small, so I'm pretty agile. I can do whatever, <laughs> I can do whatever I want. Um, but for me, it's just trying to take some of those things that are mundane or time consuming, like we use planner to to plan some of our stuff. So a lot of our, our tasks. So I have it set up that if an email comes in from Microsoft requesting an event, it automatically adds a planner task and starts that flow. Just little things like that, that make it easier for me that I can spend my time on bet on more things that are, are more meaty than copying and pasting stuff from an email. Um, I think anything you can do to automate is going to make everybody more efficient and less frustrated. But, yeah. I, I made the comment during the tweet jam that, you know, that you know, Microsoft Teams, and we'll kind of come to this later, the, the the various Microsoft technologies, but that Microsoft Teams is, you know, we're, we're truly recognizing it as the hub for work. It's where work is getting done. One of the ways that, uh, that, that I'm, I, I'm, you know, actively trying to uh, improve things is by redirecting conversation, you know, the side conversations that might happen, whether it's in another uh, channel and another chat and an independent chat, or it's happening in email, which more frequently that's happening in email. Like today, I think I've shared two, maybe three emails, and I've just redirected and forwarded those emails over into the ongoing chat. So that's folding it back in there, and redirecting the conversation. And and then I, it's always good to, you know, explain, well, why, hey, bring this back in because this is so relevant to what we're discussing. We want to make sure everybody, it, you know, it, 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 this is visible to everyone. And that just kind of helps slowly change the culture and train people on, you know, hey, here's a better way to work where we're working out loud, the old Yammer verbiage there, working mm -hmm. out loud, but sharing that, making it very, you know, visible to everyone so that we can solve problems faster together. Well, I think uh, the big point on that is that I've been highlighting that a lot with some of my consulting um, clients lately because they're compartmentalizing in emails and only certain people see those emails at that point in time. If somebody else comes into the project later or joins the team later, they don't have the benefit of that knowledge. So how do we provide that? You put it into Teams. Now it's searchable in Teams and anybody that's involved in that that group, that conversation, that channel, that workflow has access to it long term, not just when the email was in their email box. Right. Totally. That's another fun thing. We have to be those people that uh, when people come and ask questions, I would, uh, well, I'll back up. Like my, when I went to work for Pacific Bell, I've told the story many times in other sessions that I've presented and stuff, but I think literally I was replacing somebody who was retiring that week. I had one week with the person who had been in this technical project management role for you know a decade or more, and he had been with the company for 30 years. Um, and I go to ask him questions, and he kept saying it's in the binder. He had provided this huge, thick three-ring binder with all the processes, the, the different systems that he controlled – and that he owned, and I would go, and even if I found a workflow, a diagram of that thing, it would be like the basic information, and I would have no idea how to go, like, where are we in this, and, and take action on that. It wasn't helpful. I started writing notes within that, but I'd go back to him all the time saying, you know, what's the answer to this? And he's like, oh, it's in the binder, and uh, it was very frustrating. Uh, and uh, and even after he retired, after he was gone, I had many phone calls with him trying to walk through and understand, you know, in between the boxes on the flows that he had documented to really understand how to do my job until I got kind of caught up and, and was comfortable in the role. But I feel like I'm in some ways kind of back there where I find, tell people, scroll up. Have you done a search in Teams? Like we just discussed, it's in there. Well, I don't yeah. see it right there. It's like search for it. Search um, first. Search yeah, first. Search first. Then ask the question. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I but I, I understand people's see. frustration. There is so much, so many teams, so many channels, so much content that's being moved in there. And uh I, I think that there's I'll, I'll be very kind here. There's room for improvement there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, and they're they're burying some things too in my opinion. So be able, for me, I use uh, my Outlook tasks a lot. I, I, I flag emails. That's my to-do list. It's my checklist. And which is great because it's in to-do, but 
like four clicks down, there's a way to create a task from a conversation in Teams. Like four clicks out. It's like, why is that buried? You should be able to right click, create a task. It shouldn't be, right. you know, two options menus and then another option. So well, I'm annoyed enough that like, so in Outlook, so it's really easy to drag and create a drag an email and create a task or a calendar item, but it's two steps in the browser version of Outlook. Right. So right. you have to go up to the menu at the top, open up the tasks calendar tab, which opens up on the right and doesn't stay open, and then drag items over into either the task or that. So it's multiple steps to get to something that was just one drag drop go. And, and I know you go more towards the web version of Outlook now, and that, that's why I'm still old school. I love my desktop version. I use it for everything. Yeah, I'm, I just I like all everything. I just prefer, I like all the new features that are only available in the browser version. So, yeah. Okay. Well, so question three was, what are the business essentials to operate successfully in this era of hybrid and asynchronous collaboration? Well, obviously, there's some obvious ones. There's internet connection. You have to have a good internet connection, which I don't today. So thank goodness for my backup of my uh, hotspot. <laughs> um, and also to be able to communicate and, and people need to understand etiquette, how to communicate, when to communicate. And, you know, I always when I'm teaching or, or doing demonstrations in teams, I'm like, let's just back up and say, you know, I would never walk up to your desk and slam something down in here to say, talk to me right now. I said, when you do that in chat or in teams, I said, that's exactly what you're doing. So there needs to be, you know, understanding that you may be interrupting somebody. Uh -huh. And sorry, the fire truck going by. Yeah. Uh, um, you may be interrupting somebody's flow of work and ask for permission for their time. Um, something as simple in Teams when they initiate a call, don't just say, hey, what's up? Do you have a minute? It's like always some, um, you know, tell them, say, greet them, say, tell them what you need and tell them much, how much time you think that's going to take right off the bat. That way they know and they can answer yes or no or schedule with me later or something. Sure. But that communication is key. You know, I was very happy that and I, and I phrased that question saying, what are the business essentials was really to talk about kind of the broader topics like training, like etiquette, like kind of the, that side of things. We, we didn't have too many people that, that went right to the technology. And I think most of the dialogue was around kind of the softer skill issues. You know, so yep. much of that is uh, and and I, I, I feel like a broken record uh, saying this about uh, about this this topic and and similar topics governance related topics but is the the idea of having uh, that running dialogue that people feel comfortable in discussing what's working and what's not working about the culture for collaboration within the organization like you need to be able to say it's like you know something's just not working we're continually running into this and we need to get better at this and if everybody's afraid to speak up and say something like that because they you know, maybe historically they're, they've had their hand slapped, their head bitten off by, you know, right. uh, managers that took offense that people were not able to communicate and collaborate effectively because of, you know, kind of systemic issues in the organization that were keeping people from collaborating well. So that that needs to be a running dialogue and multiple feedback mechanisms there. You know, if it's the old fashioned suggestion box that sits in the uh, the lunchroom to <laughs> having regular like brown bags where you're talking about specifically diving in and say let's talk about how we do meetings what works what doesn't work about the way that our meeting culture is within our organization i mean that is uh, imperative when you're talking about hybrid and asynchronous collaboration if people aren't communicating collaborating well when everybody's together all the time it's going to be so much worse when you have people that are working remotely or occasionally in the office and using the most effective tools too because right. um, i have two clients right now that i'm working with they get they, they're like they've had teams for a year they should know it and like but did you know you can go to office.com log in and there's this entire tool set available to you that you can leverage in teams and they're like you could just log on on the internet they have no idea because somebody put a shortcut on their desktop for teams and that's what they use they don't know that it's part of a bigger tool set so or organizations had sharepoint for a decade and they still struggled to beyond the basics like people know how to 
upload and check in and check out a file, but do they know how to do the advanced capabilities and really get the most leverage out of the, the, the platform? You can't make that assumption about Teams. You can't make that about the Office applications. That's why we, we kept talking about it. You, we're big on the productivity tips and yes. we love that kind of stuff. And and half the time, the tips are, there's nothing new. They've been around for a long time since the inception of some of the Office apps, like talking about Outlook and OneNote and OneDrive. And you show people something, they're like, I had no idea that you could do that with the tools. Yes, and it's, it's the same with the Teams. Outlook. Yeah. yeah, the best kept secret of Outlook, drag and drop. People are like, how long has that been around? I'm like, well, I remember it in, you know, 2000. It may have been before that. You might know. Do you know when did that started working? No. Yeah, at least 2000, 21 years. Yeah. And they're like, wait, what? <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's like like we we take for granted like alt tab to kind of, you know, toggle through applications that are open, tabs that are open on our desktop. Um, but then there's also the uh, the the Windows arrow key to do the snap to the screen and adjust what's on your screen. And I mean, all that kind of stuff like people forget. I, I also would add and talk about the timeline feature. But with 11, it's going away. Ugh. Oh, no. It's which is well, unfortunate. You're talking about the arrows too, and when you have yeah. multiple monitors, you can move it to the other monitor. People don't know right. that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You could do snap to and then move your cursor over and snap to on your other monitor as well. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it's <laughs> it's cool. When I demo that, that's in there as well. <laughs> so, question number four, talking specifically about like what Spataro was talking about when he was talking about Teams and Dynamics 365 was collaborative apps. So, how do collaborative apps fit into your current and future plans to improve the customer and employee experience? Well, I think low hanging fruit was Microsoft Teams, right? That that's the intent is that to be collaborative, but it's it's all the pieces that fit into it that people forget about. You know that I'm going to use OneNote to manage my notes, my meeting minutes, or my agendas. I'm going to use Planner, and and they're they're not meant to be standalone applications. They're meant to be rolled up into Teams, and the third party ones that people are coming up with too, because Microsoft can't come up with and, it all. And that's where the most of the growth is. And that's like what Spataro got in there and talked about. And I use the example of, you know, uh, for example, we're, let's say we're in teams, we have a threaded discussion and there's 10 of us that are in there discussing something. Maybe we have a, a meeting going and it, you know, you can insert and use a bot to answer questions right there. All of us are there and say, you know, you know, Hey bot, can you answer this about this this customer and pull up information and link it to your CRM or link it to your FAQs or whatever that is? So right there in the flow of work and that conversation, we're not having to jump to that other, do the context switching, jump to another application and pull that up. Uh, we could do it right there or right in that flow, pull in and drop in uh, a, a quick uh, uh, you know poll or you know a, a short quiz. Um, that CRM data, the weather information, whatever it is. But I think we need to get more creative about the line of business app integrations and other integrations and productivity tools so that it drops in and becomes more, more native. I think outside of that direct flow, that conversational, uh, uh, those applications being added there, you have like the left rail. And so uh, I'm very conscious of the apps that I've added and pinned to my left rail, the ones that I most frequently use in Teams. And so I have the Yammer there. I have, at point, we have our My Hub, which I use for navigation around there, and then uh, lists and tasks all right there on the left nav because it's then I don't need to go searching around. I always have that view right there on the left nav. So I can be in the meeting you know, and, and having that conversation and then quickly jump over. Let me go take a look at that right there, opens it all up in context of the team that I'm in and then jump back into that conversation for my meeting. Yeah, and, and telling them, everybody, I tell everybody, click on the dot, 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 hit the more options button. There are magic things that happen under there and they change. So it's like, oh, what's that? I get little Easter. I don't know about you, but I get little Easter eggs all the time. You know, like what what they do now. <laughs> so yeah. that, you know, don't just take for granted that you know it's there because there's some great stuff. Well, as I said at the end, I mean, my only expectation is that I am dazzled uh, often. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's one of those things like, uh, yeah, like uh, well, we'll talk about it um, in one of the other questions, but about, 
you know, my my suggestions back to Microsoft what they should focus on. But we do all love, you know, discovering the 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 new capabilities. It's it's fun to find those things out. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll get into that a bit more. Um, the next question was around uh, what are the greatest gaps that are keeping your organization or your customers uh, from reaching your employee experience goals? This again, I'm referring to clients because we're small and yep. this is what we do. But 100 percent it's training and awareness. It's just, did you know that you can do this? Did you know that you have these applications? And then showing them how to use it and not just click steps. They need to know why. It, this can save you time. Did you know that if you do this, it's gonna, you know, somebody say, hey, that'll save me 10 to, uh, minutes a day. Well, I just saved you hours in a month and that's all money that was going out the door. So having the training, telling people, and it may sound self-serving, but that's why I'm passionate about it because I've had people say, you've changed my life. I show them how to archive their emails to OneNote and they're like, holy cow, you have absolutely changed my life. And that, that's when I know I'm doing my job. So, you know, I think it's so easy to go and say, well, we're going to hire an adoption specialist to come in and get people utilizing the tools that we're already paying for again. You know, for organizations that don't have the budget to go get some external help around that doesn't mean you can't create an adoption strategy, a plan for your organization internally and start moving forward on that. Because I agree with you. It's so much of it is, you know, I mean, it, again, we could complain about there, there are real gaps from a technology standpoint. I mean, what I, I number one response I get from my developer team, like, what are your your biggest requests for Microsoft? It's like expansion of the APIs. We've got a dozen or more at any given moment of, of requests out there and specific reasons why and customer, you know, uh, uh, needs that are drive each of those requests. Um, but for the majority of what is out there, it's just training and awareness of what's already there today. Right. And that's an ongoing battle. It's, you know, when you're teaching people new, new, new content. So Sherry, when you do one class and they see a new a feature one time and do a little practice with it, do they instantly remember all of those things that they're seeing for the first time and, and have done once in a training setting? No. And it was, and that's why I got out. Of that's the okay. They don't remember everything. <laughs> that's why I got out of the traditional, we called it butts in seats, you know, for some of these chain training companies. And then we started our own because most of the people that are coming to an Excel level one class or Excel level two class already have a certain percent of, of knowledge that's there. So 40% of the class is a waste of their time. They're going to remember, you know, they're going to maybe learn 60% new, but they're going to take away 10% of it. So why don't we give it to them in 10% increments? Why don't we give it to them in context of why you, this is going to be helpful to you? And so um, when I'm talking to the clients, they always say, I need you to do this for me. I'm like, no, no, no. What's your problem? And they say, what do you mean? I'm like, what, what is the business challenge you have? Not like, what's your problem, snarky, but yeah. what's your problem? And then we'll find the solution for it. Don't tell me you need Excel training. Tell me what your, your problem is. And then we'll find the best solution for that. And that's how it gets adopted. And that's how it gets used. And that's how people retain it. Not just making them sit through eight hours of how to create formulas in Excel. Right. I think you just <laughs> identified a key part, too, when you're talking about, you know, uh, what if you have specific employee experience goals uh you you have to have that self-awareness that idea of like well here's what it is and here's what's missing and and why again you you talk through that even yourself or as a small team and say what are we really trying to achieve and what are the the problems there um you know one you may just you answer some of the own questions or close some of the gaps that you've identified just by having that conversation oh you're doing it that way here's how i do it like internally doing those kinds of best practices which is how so many user groups start you know internal with the company is getting together and just kind of sharing best practices um that's why i'm, I'm a big awesome. fan of right <laughs> yeah yeah I, I'm a big fan of like the Friday lunchtime, the like the brown bag presentation and rotate that and require people to to take a turn. It doesn't mean that what you're working on and what you've done is perfect. It's a way of just sharing that this is what I'm doing. This is a major part of my job. I've been able to improve on somewhat. And, and somebody else may say like, look, 
I had very similar. This is what I found. If you did this, you know, and sharing of ideas, or have you seen this other feature that's relatively new? This is what it did, how it saved me time. And that's where you you pick up so many of those things from from others. And then we'll remind each other, like, hey, are you still using that new? Oh, I completely forgot about that. Yeah, you know, it's okay. like, hey, if you want me to walk you through what I've been doing again, I'll show you. Uh, those kinds of of, uh, of serendipitous encounters that you know happen if you make time, make room for them as part of your culture. So set that something like that up. Well, and, and people that are really sharp sometimes can be real quiet, and people don't know that they're a really good asset for certain things until they get the opportunity to show that you know to shine. And right. it could be like a two minute. This I learned how to use flash fill in Excel. Like, what is that? And, and they're the hero. They become the hero because that thing right there will save everybody time. And um, and they build their confidence. I, weirdly enough, used to get so nervous speaking in front of people that I would actually get sick and couldn't do it until I went yeah. through uh, what I call my boot camp class in college. And now I can talk in front of anybody, but it's because people were like, wow, you really know a lot. You should share is like, Maybe that's what I should do. And now, now yep. you can't shut me up. Right. So, <laughs> well, there's, I, so I knew somebody that was in support operations and again, was, was really good with on the phone, but um, she never felt that you know, again, like, well, these aren't complete. Like I, I just experiences, I just, I know this and I, you know, encouraged her to document those and share those out. And that helped kind of open things up away. So again, it wasn't like you don't have to do a formal presentation. If you're you have the deathly fear of presenting in front of a group, there are other ways that you can interact and get this knowledge sharing out and help other people that may you know help improve that. So yeah, that's why I'm a big fan of that. I agree with you. Training and communication are the two biggest areas for closing those those gaps. Um, the next question was, uh, which Microsoft solutions have had the greatest impact on the flow of work for you or your organization and how? Well, this because it's been my baby for over 20 years, but SharePoint, 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 <laughs> you know, and to the point where you know, everybody's talking about Microsoft lists and they're like, yeah, great. They've been around for 20 years. Welcome to my world. And, you know, I track everything in lists and I have forever, but people kind of take things at face value and think those templates that come up when you add a list are all you have. It's like, no, you can build a list for it. Those are the suggestions, people. Those are <laughs> that's that, that that's getting you started. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can customize it and you can add workflows to them. Um, so Microsoft Forms being able to, you know, Microsoft Forms is great. You can gather the information, but it only comes out in an Excel format. It's not reusable from there. And the next time you get new responses, you have to start all over again. Well, I want that in a SharePoint list where I can take that information and develop something from it. It could be the, the basis of a Microsoft Word document. I've done a mail merge basically from that data and generate a contract or generate. I mean, it can be used for anything. It's just a database. And to be able to attach those two and simply, especially since forms can be used like outside of your organization, shared with anyone, but SharePoint, you can protect the list and, and then leverage it however you need to. So definitely, of course, SharePoint, not just the documents, but the lists, Though that's my biggest, those are my babies. <laughs> yeah, you know, look, I'm 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 a huge fan of Teams. A lot of the 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 reason why too is just because even it being a longtime SharePoint person and and coming from the project management world, that side of it, I was always I found myself building project management and and you know, like you know well that we had an intranet, but you know the function, but team sites and leveraging team sites to to try and build out kind of what we now have with with teams so more of that day to day in there actively working so the the project management tools whether you're using planner you're using a list you're using excel doesn't matter um, but you know having all of that all of those different tools which could be different per project for per customer and teams help organize all those things and obviously it's sharepoint under the hood that it's running there um, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, to do, I'm also a huge fan of, uh, and I, I'm, I still uh, am excited about 
Microsoft's roadmaps for task management. We're not there yet. It's a long way to go, but they've made tremendous progress there. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I'm a huge fan of OneNote, have been for 20 years, you know, uh, so it, it started using that just is fantastic. And I love when Microsoft added uh, the ability to drop the shared OneNote into meeting invites. I know it's you know it's now part of uh, Teams. I don't know who was asleep at the wheel when they decided to make standard the Wiki tab versus make like OneNote and just make that the default experience. They've corrected. Yeah. They've they fixed things, but. Um, and the meeting notes and the actual right. team meeting is in that wiki, weird wiki format. I don't like that either. Right. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, there's, uh, again, opportunities to improve for Microsoft as well as for partners. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but all those things have had you know tremendous impact on on the way that my org has worked. Well, and then the and last. Who decided, oh, go ahead. who decided to put the one note in the site assets library instead of a notebooks library? Come on. <laughs> I, yeah, it's buried. I don't know. There was reasoning behind it. It was just <laughs> faulty reasoning. I know. Uh, the last one, last question was, what is the future of collaborative apps for the modern workplace? What are your predictions for the flow of work? You know, I think, um, and I know Microsoft, Microsoft gives us a good foundation to start from, but th they can't find the solution for everything. They can't develop it, They, you know, and they got in trouble at one point when they tried to, like 20 years ago, they're trying to say they were a, you know, a monopoly or whatever. Um, they give us the platform and brilliant people with brilliant ideas are building on those. So I think we're just going to see more and more added to those those third party apps that are that play well with teams. Um, as different needs arise and, you know, maybe some of those things in user voice that are not being addressed, like to your point this morning, it's like, can you quit creating new stuff and just build on the stuff yeah. that we love? You know, yes, please. Let's have, you know, the basic things like cascading drop down lists in, in uh, SharePoint or secured views in SharePoint that other third party tools have done. Quit doing that. Let's let's start working on those. But and let the partners, let those other people develop the the third party apps that fit into that workspace. I think that's going to be what we see more of. I know that one of the uh, FY22 kind of uh, initiatives that Microsoft is supporting, they're really pushing partners to develop, you know, industry specific solutions, which is something that I mean, for MSPs, it's a great example for that. So uh, uh, managed service providers. So you might be you you in a lot of small businesses, you know, might purchase their licenses for Microsoft 365 and as well as other uh, you know project server type solutions, other specialty solutions through an MSP. Well, a lot of them, you have MSPs that focus on the healthcare industry or on education or on uh, you know law firms, for example. There's a few um, solutions that are out there that I'm aware of um, where they they have their depth of expertise within that industry. And Microsoft is really pushing for the development of solutions on there. Now, one, I'd say that there's still plenty of opportunity for those companies like mine, like AdPoint, for horizontal solutions that are cross industry, but that's just kind of where my, Microsoft's mind at, is at in in doing the depth. I think there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, you know depth within industry or solution areas uh, because of you know Microsoft encouraging development and even providing some funding for development of those solutions. So if you have an idea for an industry that's out there, talk to your Microsoft contacts because there are dollars available. So. Yeah, yeah, I I think that is going to, but the in, the increased focus on the flow of work and creating solutions that integrate in, like like we saw when Teams launched, one of the first areas where everybody seemed to be building a bot, and like nobody's talking about bots anymore, but it's like still an essential flow of work application type that's out there. Uh, you just need to be more purposeful and focused in what the solution is uh, to get the message out there. But again, that's where a lot of the development is, a lot of the future development will come from. Well, I, th I think that needs to come from the trenches, right? I, I couldn't build right. a healthcare app or, or a healthcare solution because I may have worked in it a little 
bit, but I don't have the depth of knowledge in that where like my background is human resources and I could probably build a whole HR solution on how to onboard employees the right way because I've, I've built them out of SharePoint manually for so long because that's that's like a consistent need in every single company. I think those need those um, verticals like you're talking about, but also those functions that every company needs like HR, IT, help desk solutions. You know, there's a huge market for that. And because we're building them from scratch every single time yep. when people need them. Right. So and well, my, yeah, my thing is I, 80%. If you can get away with 80% in a solution, you're good. If you have to do away with or have to develop the other 20, then you're still winning. You're not going to get 100%. I think there's an opportunity for, I mean, it's something like that we're talking about here at that point about, uh, you know, helping our partners, our services based partners to uh, to create some of these solutions, whether they we facilitate, we help and they're developing or they partner with us to develop or, uh, you know, so that I think that there is a, a, a tremendous opportunity there to to get good at that identifying where there are industry or solution area needs and developing or co-developing you know uh, solutions for those those areas and to your point i mean that's what microsoft wants to see satya in his first uh, uh keynote as when he became ceo what five six years ago I mean, however long it's been now i forget with, it's with blurred pandemic, i don't know anymore. yeah <laughs> years in the past uh, but his yeah. first one uh so it was down in vegas um so before it got rebranded as inspire so it was still the worldwide partner conference and he talked about um uh, you know, wanting to build build the best solutions, you know, in the world and where Microsoft didn't have a solution or the best solution that they would partner, that they would integrate. And they worked because the the focus was delivering the best end-to-end -end customer experience and not get caught up in, well, we own this piece and this piece, but the rest of it, you're on your own. Not good enough. Right. Like we need to have that end-to-end -end experience and do whatever we can, Microsoft speaking, you know, to to deliver that. And as partners, yourself, myself, uh, you know, we we participate in that ecosystem in delivering that, uh, you know, that optimal end to end user experience. So there's within that tremendous opportunity, it's just a matter of carving out the piece that you want to go after. Yeah, it's just and as simple as on that. Yeah. yeah, everybody just needs to do what they do best. And like right. we were talking about, you know, partner with the right people. And do what you do best because right. we can't all do it all and that frankly i don't want to so <laughs> if you like this advice then sherry and i only charge uh, six seven hundred dollars an hour each <laughs> and we, you know, tag team go in and, and advise you on on uh, wisdom like that so well sherry <laughs> really really appreciate your time thanks again for participating in the tweet jam uh it, it's uh it's always great to i love these discussions a lot of very intentionally broad questions because we get a range of, of feedback from them. I'm still kind of going through and and reading through the responses and I'm gonna go look at the Tigraph stats tonight and pull in some of the data data points from that because it was a very active uh, uh, tweet jam today, uh, but really appreciate your participation as always. Oh, thank you. And they're always fun for me. And of course I get to hang out with all the cool kids. So that makes me happy and hopefully in person again soon. Neat. New England, if no else. Yes. Yeah. So, I, I hope to get back to that as well. So, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for your time. And we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, Christian. Have a good day.